Hello and welcome to the video for how do I use the built-in subtitle system. We'll go over this quick example and then get right into it. If I hit my play dialog wave button, it will play a sound and you will see a subtitle at the bottom of the screen. This is using the built-in Unreal Engine 4 subtitle system and we are going to cover it right now. One of the most important things is in your editor project settings, we need to make sure that subtitles are enabled. Under general settings, we have a section called subtitles enabled. Make sure that's checked. To start off with, let me go ahead and edit our example project to remove what I've done already, and we will start over from scratch. Okay, so to start off with, we need a sound. I've gone ahead and used this scream sound. You'll notice it has a subtitle section. Nothing is checked or enabled as we will be using a dialogue wave to display our subtitles. A dialogue wave consists of basically a few settings that will show what we are going to display on the screen for a subtitle. So under the sounds dialogue wave section, we'll go ahead and create a dialogue wave called screen. Once we open this up, we're going to go ahead and set this up. We're going to need two dialogue voices. One is a speaker, and one is who is being spoken at. We're going to need some text, and then we're actually going to need in this nice little hidden section the wave we're going to play. Let's set up our speakers first. By default we have none, so let's go ahead and create a new dialogue voice. We will name the first one Matt, as that is who will be speaking, well screaming in this case, and we'll add another one, and we will call that Barry. By default, it just simply creates a few gender neutral speakers. You can name these whatever you want. I try to name them for the people. That way it makes it easier when you are creating context later. In this little hidden drop down, you will find the sound wave. Let's set this to scream. And this is what wave will be played when we play the dialogue wave. Under that, we have spoken text. This is simply what you see on the screen. It could be something fitting or it could be something slightly different like this is the subtitle which is what we're going to use for our example that's it that's all we need to do for a dialogue wave make sure we have correct dialogue voices which sound we're going to play and then the spoken text itself in here you'll notice our dialogue voices dialogue voices are pretty much for reference you can set these to whatever you'd like it's for your own personal reference I'll go ahead and set these to random things just for fun. Now, in our subtitle example, what we're going to do is simply have a dialogue wave button play the dialogue wave. So when we click this, we'll drag off and we'll do a play dialogue. We're going to go ahead and do the play dialogue at location. The play dialogue at 2D, I cannot seem to get to display subtitles, so the location works just fine. The two most important parts for the locate play dialog at location is the dialog itself. We will set that to our screen. And then the context. If we compile this, you'll notice it needs a context. The context tells the dialog who is speaking and who they are speaking to. You can create a new variable for a dialog context, or the easiest way, in my opinion, is just right click and promote to variable. This will give you a new variable. Let's go ahead and change the name to Matt to Barry so we know who is speaking to whom. Go ahead and compile this so we get access to our default value. You need to fill in the default value and this needs to match the dialog wave. Since in our dialog wave we have Matt speaking to Barry, we need to make sure our dialog context matches. If it does not, you will have issues and the subtitles will not play. All these other options are optional, location, rotation, multipliers, attenuation. This is nice, for example, you could have a third person watching two people speak, so you would attach the dialogue location to the other two people so it actually sounds like left or right if you have stereo speakers. Let's go ahead and play this example. And you notice it works. You'll notice when we play, we have a tiny little subtitle at the bottom, which is what we wrote. Now the tiny little subtitle is one of the inherent issues with the built-in subtitle system. The built-in subtitle system does not, by default, have the ability to resize or change the font. The built-in subtitle system uses the default value 
for the built-in system font. So we'll go ahead and change that now. Let's go down to our content browser, show engine content, click on engine content and search for Roboto. This is our default engine font, Roboto. On the right hand side, you will see runtime font, legacy font size. As the tooltip says, this is the default size for any time anything does not specify a size. So let's change this to something larger like 24 and hit save. Now if we go back in and play, you will find our subtitle is now larger. Now one small issue with that is when you change the engine default size, certain things that use the engine font will change, such as in the bottom left corner, this changes in size, as well as our FPS display changes in size. It's not really a big deal, but this is one of the limitations with use, using the built-in font and subtitle system for Unreal Engine 4. If you'd like better control, you will need to roll your own subtitle system.